I'm Brenda. Welcome back to my quilt room. Today I would like to show you the second in a series of memory quilts that I've been working on. I've had a lot of feedback about how much people really like this particular quilt and so I'm going to try and go through what I used and how I made it with you today. So this quilt, like I said, is a memory quilt and it's made out of the dresses of a lady who we went to church with and the family asked me would I make them some memory quilts out of her clothing. So everything in this quilt is from her clothing except for these off-white strips here that are part of uh, a jelly roll. Now you may not know what a jelly roll is if you're new to quilting. They're pre-cut two and a half inch strips and they come in rolls like this and they come in colors, solid colors, a variety of colors and styles. This particular roll has 20 strips in it. And so I used a few of those to make the background for this quilt. And this is what they will look like when you unroll them, okay? They're quite wrinkled. You will want to take your time and lay them out and iron them. So, and be very careful that you try not to stretch them when you are ironing them. And so this one was just a variety of patterns in the same color. And so that's what I used. Now, for the dresses, I used a Pellon iron-on interfacing. And that is this. And because I knew I was going to be using so much of it, I purchased the entire roll. And when you you'll feel that it has little gluey bumps on the back side. It's very sheer and very lightweight. And that's really all you need to stabilize your fabric to keep it from stretching as you sew. So I wanted you to see that. So because this particular skirt of this dress was cut on the bias, so it would have been very stretchy if you pulled on it, of course it's not now because it's been stabilized. So I stabilized all the fabric and I cut what I had into two and a half inch strips to make the cross. Now to make the cross, I'll just go over some basic instructions with you. This was a picture that I printed off of the internet. And several years ago, I made one of these. It was a small lap robe for my mother. So the lady said that she liked that pattern, and so she wanted it larger, though. So what I did was I kind of measured out how long I needed my strips to be. And if you're interested, you can always leave me a comment, and I will do my best to send you all of the dimensions and measurements that I used. I simply jotted down the information for myself should I ever want to make that pattern again and as it turns out I did make it again and I made it larger. Um, it, it calls for, you'll need 16 of these half square triangles to make part of this, this part of the crown. And so I was going to tell you and show you how for this particular quilt to do that. You're gonna make eight half square triangles and you can make them all at once. This is a six and three quarter inch square. And you will use the opposing color. You'll use two opposing colors and put them face together. Now for showing you purposes, the blue line is the line that you will be cutting them on. The red line is a quarter inch of your dissecting line that you're gonna make your half square triangles with. So your red line is your sewing line. So I wanted you to see that you mark an X diagonally, corner to corner on your squares and then you will sew a quarter inch on each of those and turn it. 
Then when you have that finished, you will place it on your cutting mat and you're gonna cut along the blue lines, okay? This way, this way, and corner to corner. And after you do that, what you will end up with, you'll end up with eight of these little half square triangle pieces. These need to be squared up to two and a half inches. Now I happen to have a two and a half inch block. And for me, the easiest way to square up is to put that dashed line on the stitched line and then you will use your rotary cutter and trim. And once you iron back your dark side, then you will end up and you will end up with an exact two and a half inch square. So that is a very easy way to make multiple half square triangles at the same time if you're doing a project that calls for a lot of these. Now in, in this, I needed 16. So I made two of these six and three quarter inch squares and cut them out and then I had all 16 of my half square triangles ready to go. There's also a half square triangle ruler. I'm not endorsed for this, it's from Quilt in a Day. And I've had this for many, many years. I love it, I use it quite a lot. And you do the same thing, it's the same measurement. I would lay the stitch, lay my ruler with the dotted line. I would lay it right on my stitch line and trim just like I did with this one. And as you can see here, they are, they're exactly the same. If you could see if I have that up there correctly. So they're the same size. So whatever works for you. And when you're doing a lot of half square triangles, it is handy if you have a rotating mat. Now this little mat that I have, because those were small, if you're gentle, you can easily turn this on whatever, wherever you're working to cut out your triangles. So that's how you make the, the cross, the, the star, the crown of thorns it, that looks like, it, sometimes I think it's called a carpenter wheel in the middle of the cross. You will also need um, two and a half inch squares to go along the end of the beams at the bottom and at the top of the quilt. And I believe you need 40 of those. In, up here, I've put a dove. This was out of another dress that she had. And for that, I printed out a picture of an applique off, just off the internet and blew it up and made it a little bigger and then I traced around it so that I would know where the wing was with a friction pen so that after I sewed it and I pressed it, then the ink would disappear. So you can find all of this kind of stuff on the internet. Now for the INRI lettering, I just went to my Word document and I printed out the letters in the size and in the font that I preferred. And then I simply went back and cut the letters out. I traced them onto the back of the fabric, as you can see here, with my friction pen. Now, note to self, this is backwards. So you need to remember that when you are tracing your letters and you're gonna be cutting things out, if they're directional, you need to make sure you have it on there the right direction because then I had to make another in and turn it around. So that was how, and then I, I pressed them on with um, heat and bond or your applique tacky glue and then I stitched around those. Out of the dresses, I was able to cut out these roses and make the vines and 
make some flowers coming up for interest so that there wasn't so much empty space on each side of the quilt. Okay, that's for, that's pretty much for the dimensions of the, of the cross. Now, I, in my last video, I told you that I would show you how to make a label. And what I've done is I put the information for the quilt onto a piece of fabric. Now, I used a fat quarter, and out of a fat quarter, you can get two regular eight and a half by 11 sheet sized pieces of fabric when you cut it. So what you want to do with that is I use regular freezer paper that you can buy in any supermarket. And you'll see when you pull it out, it has a very glossy side and then a paper side. So you will want to tear off and use enough that will be the size of a sheet of paper. So I pulled it out large enough for my fat quarter and then I simply laid it down on my cutting mat and cut them so that they were the size I needed them to be. Now, this is an applique pressing mat. And if you like to do a lot of applique, you may want to invest in one of these. And it was made by Bear Thread Designs. I'm not even sure what company I even ordered this from, but it's like Teflon coated. So when you're ironing your fabric down, you can put this over the top. When you're heating, you're gonna heat your fabric to the shiny side of your freezer paper. And then what I did was I simply made a Word document and I typed out all the information that I wanted to be on my label. And I cut it then to the eight and a half by 11 size. And I put this in the printer and I ran it through the printer. Now, the, I have a toner printer. that I do not have an inkjet printer. And sometimes it does want to go through and then other times it doesn't want to go through. So what I found what has worked for me is as soon as I have it ironed on there and printed and ready to go, I take this right to the printer and hit print for it to feed right through. You may have a better experience with whatever type of printer you have. But then I came back and then I put my pressing mat over the top of it and I went over it again with the iron and pressed it down just to pick up any possible um, residue from the toner because we don't want it to fade and come off on the quilt should it be laundered. And so that was how I made the label and like I said if you want any any more specific directions on this quilt and how to make it just leave me a comment and I'll get back to you this quilt came out to be 75 inches wide and 85 inches long and so there's one last look at the quilt and I'll be making several more I'll be doing some baby quilts here in the next month, and then I'll be getting back to making my memory quilts. So I hope that you have enjoyed this video, and if you do, that you will subscribe and give me a thumbs up. Thank you. Mm -hmm.